honored here today uh, in Michigan to welcome uh, the Honorable uh, Ambassador of the United States to Yemen, Gerald Feinstein. Welcome. Thank I you. Think it's, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. It's the second time we meet. It uh, is. Uh, and the Yemeni American News uh, welcomes you to Thank Michigan, you. And Detroit in particular. And we want to talk about the situation in Yemen. As you can see, my colleagues here, we're going to have a panel uh, discussion. And the region was hit by a political tsunami, mm -hmm. and Yemen certainly uh, saw its uh, its wave there. Mm -hmm. And we would like to update us on the current situation in Yemen. I'd, I'd be delighted. Uh, uh, and uh, basically, um, where where we are right now is, as you said uh, quite correctly, right after we met last year, yes. uh, which was uh, last January, uh, the, uh, the 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 uh, political situation in in Yemen uh, took a very dramatic turn, and uh, uh, we spent a year uh, uh, trying to find a way forward uh, for for Yemen. And uh, I believe that, uh, uh, to the credit of the Yemeni leadership on both sides, uh, that uh, uh, we uh, achieved a, a very important uh, success. And that is that uh, the only Arab country uh, that was affected by events last year uh, that managed to achieve a, a negotiated agreement uh, signed that provided a blueprint for a political transition and a way forward for the future. Two years uh, that uh, would uh, lead to an immediate change in uh, the presidency and then also laid out a number of steps that were necessary in order to put Yemen on a positive uh, path for the future. We uh, began the implementation almost a year ago. In yes. November uh, uh, of last year, the agreement was signed in Riyadh. Uh, as uh, required by the agreement, we formed a, a coalition government, yeah. a national consensus government. Uh, there was an election in uh, February for a transitional president. Uh, and uh, a number of other elements are ongoing, the military and security reorganization uh, that's required in the GCC initiative is underway. Uh, the uh, security situation has stabilized a lot. Uh, and now uh, we're in the finishing phases uh, of uh, the work of the preparatory committee for the National Dialogue. Uh, uh, Which is headed by Dr. Iriani. By uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Iriani is the chairman of that, and uh, they intend to present the report to uh, President Hadi very soon, perhaps before the Eid, or immediately afterwards. And hopefully, uh, we will uh, see the beginning of the national dialogue, uh, maybe at the end of November, uh, and uh, that national dialogue is charged with taking on some of the most difficult challenges, mm -hmm. some of the most difficult issues what do you think that confront the, Yemen. What are the, the most difficult Well, uh, um, resolving the uh, differences between the North and the South, okay. uh, bringing the Houthis into the national consensus, uh, and then also some structural issues. Uh, the, um, that was, that was going to be my next question. I think the, the, uh, a lot of Yemeni's concern is the unification of the military. Well, well, but, but before we get that, but, but also two other issues, um, and that is uh, whether or not, uh, whether Yemen is going to be a federal republic mm -hmm. or a unitary mm -hmm. system, and also whether it's going to be a presidential or a parliamentary system. And at the end of the national dialogue, there is to be a constitutional drafting exercise, uh, whether, um, whether there's going to be a new constitution completely or simply amendments to the old constitution remains to be seen, mm -hmm. but, uh, uh, but uh, there will be uh, um, some changes to the constitution and then next summer we hope there will be a constitutional referendum uh, that will provide the Yemeni people with the opportunity to say whether they agree with this or don't agree. And then, of course, the, the, the key um, issue is the completion of the transition period in February 2014 uh, with new elections. Uh, 
under the new constitution. So all of those things are in front of us and, uh, and uh, so far we're moving forward. We're on track to complete the work uh, within the, uh, the time that uh, was provided in the initiative. Now on the military and security reorganization, uh, because of uh, the close relationship between the U.S and uh, the Yemeni military and security institutions. Uh, we have played a leading role in supporting the reorganization planning. Uh, and uh, um, we're moving forward on it. We've been working with the Yemeni military since March of this year. Uh, we just had a meeting with President Hadi and the Ministers of Defense and mm -hmm. Interior about a week ago to review the progress that we're making and to make sure that we're moving forward in the right uh, the right way. Uh, I think we're, we're making good is, progress. Is all parties, and I'm, I'm speaking candidly here, military-wise, is all parties compliance with the GCC initiative right now? Or are we still seeing some, some barriers there? Well, I, I think that uh, I, I wouldn't say that uh, um, everything is moving forward perfectly. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I think that uh, one of the things that, that, uh, I, that I've heard often in uh, discussing uh, this, these issues with uh, my colleagues here in Washington is that um, if anybody last November said this is the way things would be in Yemen after one year, uh, they would have been very satisfied. Mm -hmm. uh, again, it's not perfect. Uh, we continue to, to be concerned about obstacles. We're concerned about uh, uh, potential spoilers in the process. Uh, not everybody uh, uh, is 100% behind it. But the fact of the matter is that we're making progress. We're on track to complete the process within the two years that the GCC initiative now, gave us. With the spoilers, what role and uh, of course the U.S. is, is, is in, with your leadership is, is making a great role. What role the, the U.S. and the Security Council members as well, what clear message are they sending to the spoilers? Well, I think the, the, the very clear message that uh, earlier this year, President Obama issued an executive order uh, which uh, provided for the United States to impose sanctions on anyone that we consider to be um, obstructing the uh, implementation of the GCC initiative. President Obama's executive order was followed up by UN Security Council Resolution 2051, which uh, provided the same possibility for sanctions uh, at the international level. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, supported by all of the uh, members of the Security Council, the five permanent members and, and uh, the others as well. So um, that I think was a clear warning to, uh, to those who are uh, looking at the possibility of uh, interfering, of trying to undermine the GCC initiative, uh, that there could be um, consequences for mm -hmm. them. Uh, since then, uh, we have discussed with our capitals uh, you know, there's a group of ten ambassadors in, uh, in Sana'a who meet regularly uh, and uh, uh, there's been some discussion and we have gone back to our capitals individually and recommended that we look carefully at the evidence to see whether uh, uh, we can identify uh, clear steps uh, that uh, uh, individuals or groups have taken to try to undermine the GCC initiative that might trigger either President Obama's executive order or the UN Security Council resolution uh, to impose sanctions. So that is, um, uh, we're looking at that now and we'll, we'll see where that process comes out. Well, uh, Mr. Ambassador, thank you very much for your comment. I will go a little bit in a different subject. So we don't want to give you the whole heat right there. You remember when you came in the last year here, and I raised the questions, me and Mr. Wally, we asked you a question, uh, the event, uh, the one that's happening in Tunis is going to be in Yemen. And he was, you know, wondering, uh, it's not going to happen in Yemen. Yemen is a different situation. Then it's happening, right? So we'll raise something else, so it will be some surprise so to you. 
I think as uh, as as a person in the media, I've been watching the event very closely. So I care about uh, American interest. I care about human interest. Do you think, from your recommendation, three hundred fifty million dollars as an ad are support from the Yemeni, from American to the to Yemen? Is it enough? Are they deserve it more? Because when you see a different country having a, a more than billion dollars and Yemen just three hundred million, three hundred fifty million dollars, most of it go to the monetary institution. Do you think, and are your recommendation, I know the Congress was making that, that, that call, but as your expert and your experience, can you, or can you help the Yemen case? Or you see they, they need really more than $150 million? Well, uh, uh, let me make a couple of points. One, of course, is that um, uh, the $350 million that you reference is, uh, of course, from fiscal year 2012 that just ended. Uh, it was uh, divided, actually, almost exactly evenly, uh, $175 million in humanitarian and development aid, as well as $175 million in, in uh, security assistance, so, so um, including on the uh, on the uh, humanitarian side, over a hundred million dollars went specifically to try to address uh, the very critical humanitarian uh, challenge in front of uh, in front of Yemen. Uh, the uh, level of U.S. Uh, assistance to Yemen last year was the highest ever. We've never provided more uh, assistance to Yemen, and of course, it was part of uh, uh, an extremely significant. Uh, international donor response to Yemen's needs that uh, overall in between the uh, conference in Riyadh in uh, the beginning of September mm -hmm. as well as the meeting of the Friends of Yemen in New York on the 27th of September uh, was uh, over eight billion dollars, over eight billion dollars pledged for uh, Yemen on the economic and secure, uh, on the economic and uh, humanitarian side. Uh, uh, so, uh, so this is a very substantial, very substantial amount of uh, funding for Yemen that's going to be very available for uh, various kinds of development programs going forward. Uh, the United States will remain engaged. Uh, we're um, the largest humanitarian uh, donor to, to Yemen, uh, and uh, I think that we will certainly be committed to continuing our efforts to address this critical humanitarian situation, as well as to continue to work on the development side. We recognize that uh, economic growth and prosperity are critical uh, for, the, uh, for the future of Yemen, not only on the economic side, but also in terms of security and the political transition. Well, if I can, if I can follow up on that, I think this is a very, very good point. I read at the UN report, the World uh, Food Program, that 10 million Yemenis, or half the population, are hungry and need About 40 percent. Just 40 percent. 40 percent are food insecure. And, and that's, that's a very alarming number. It is. To be, uh, to, in any country. Yes. And we would uh, urge the United States government to focus on that and to, to be uh, not just in the military because if people have food, uh, I think uh, there would be more calmly. Yeah. I mean, they don't have, and we saw, and we've been uh, watching very closely the situation there. We've seen what happened at the embassy. And seeing at the embassy, it was, uh, uh, was a disaster for us mm -hmm. as many Americans. Mm -hmm. But it's because the people are hungry. Right. But again, uh, the U.S. provided uh, over 100, about $117 million in humanitarian assistance alone last year. Uh, by far the largest uh, humanitarian donor to, to Yemen. Uh, and uh, I'm confident that we're going to continue uh, providing a very significant amount of humanitarian assistance. Also, of course, uh, not only uh, uh, do we provide bilaterally our own uh, uh, assistance to address humanitarian concerns, but we also use our relationships around the world to okay. encourage other countries also to, to contribute. So uh, I think, you know, we agree completely this is a extremely serious situation, one of the worst humanitarian crises anywhere in the world right now. And uh, uh, we, uh, I guarantee, are going to continue to be 
um, uh, very much involved in trying to, to um, address it. Uh, I can actually slightly extend my appreciation uh, you know, for your time. Uh, and I think I just wanted to stress an extra point to, to the humanitarian effort that the U.S. extended to him. And one of the main complaints has been there by the, the donors are the uh, structuring of the humanitarian aid when it's handed to the Yemeni government that it's not handled responsibly and managed to reach to the to the individuals or to the populations and be able to assist them, whether it's in the educations or the hospitals or the health, whatever it is the the the, the individual Yemeni is concerned with. And, and my question is, as a donor, do you foresee the change on your side that you not just demand you know rules of engagements from the Yemeni government and how to manage those funds, or do you foresee that you should be as a donor involved in managing? Well, let me, let me make two points. On the humanitarian assistance side, um, U.S. assistance goes mostly through United Nations agencies uh, or uh, non-governmental organizations. Uh, we don't really provide humanitarian assistance through the government of Yemen. Uh, so um, so uh, on, that, on that score, I think uh, uh, we are uh, confident that uh, that in fact the assistance reaches the intended recipients. Um, more broadly on the economic development side uh, where you do have these concerns uh, I think it's extremely significant that uh, that as part of the donors conference in Riyadh uh, the government of Yemen with the donor community announced what's called the mutual accountability framework uh, and uh, that is going to uh, govern uh, the way development assistance is, uh, is provided uh, to Yemen over the, the coming uh, period of time. And it's, uh, as, as the name implies, it's a mutual, it's a commitment on both the, the part of the government of Yemen and on the part of the donor community to, to take steps to ensure transparency and accountability in the delivery of development assistance to Yemen, as well as to provide for uh, structural reforms, economic reforms, that will help speed up the process of uh, transfer, you know, transitioning from pledges to actual projects. Make use of that money. In 2006, uh, in uh, London, we had a very significant donor conference, a large amount of money pledged, much of that never actually became uh, projectized. It was never used uh, because of the inability of the government and the donors uh, uh, to agree on how to use the money. Now that did not apply to the United States. All of the money that we pledged was actually implemented, but for many of the other donors uh, there were difficulties in, uh, in uh, actually utilizing the funds that were provided. This time there is an understanding on the part of the donors and the government of Yemen that we need to do a better job, that people expect to see some result from this very positive um, donor, uh, donor commitment uh, to Yemen. I, th I, th I think you, you cover all of the thing about the, 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 the tough issues in Yemen. If we go a little bit to the main thing of the Yemeni American community who's concerned about the, the counseling job there in Yemen, it's, uh, they just, uh, this is how we heard and we get the emails and response mm -hmm. from the community. Mm -hmm. They're thinking they're not treating like, in, in some of them, not all of them, like in, in a human being, and they're not treating like, like what the other country treat their, their citizen. So if you have a processing uh, case in, in Saudi Arabia, they treat you there different than in, in, in Yemen, if you have the case in Yemen. So do you think this is, can the processing be more flexible? Can, can the, uh, can, as, as your position, can you do something on it? Well, uh, uh, but uh, uh, I would say we have uh, an outstanding team in our consular section in, in uh, Sana'a now. Uh, uh, some of the, uh, the best uh, uh, consular officers anywhere in the world are working in Sana'a. And uh, we work very hard at making sure that, uh, that in fact, 
uh, people get uh, uh, proper treatment. Uh, this is something that's very important. It's very important to me. It's very important to my uh, to my team there uh, to make sure that people get a proper reception. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean, I've got to be honest, it doesn't necessarily mean that people will get the answer that they're looking for. Well, uh, but, but, uh, but we do um, everything that we can uh, to make sure that these cases are handled in the best possible way. Uh, we have uh, a law, uh, you know, a set of laws that have to be implemented. We, uh, we do that. Uh, I, I can guarantee, and I, I think that uh, one promise that we can make is that people, uh, that everybody who walks through our door, uh, will be treated respectfully. Yes. Uh, but uh, you know, but then each case will have its own unique uh, uh, way forward, and and uh, I hope that uh, people are satisfied. Sometimes, the, sometimes they won't be. Well, uh, I'm gonna follow up on that. I think that was the hot topics last year mm -hmm. when you had a town <laughs> hall meeting, and I think no doubt you have what the best professional staff there, and at the embassy we have no doubt about that. Mm -hmm. I think the concern in the community is that delays and delays and delays of visa, and another issue this year that came up, and I know this for a fact, is a lot of or most. American citizens of Yemen that are retired there are being denied cash in their checks there. Are you aware of that? Do you have know any information? Yes. Was there any well, and well, why? let's. Um, uh, <coughs> there, there are a couple of uh, a couple of issues. Uh, delays, delays occur. We have no particular interest in seeing cases delayed. We would like to close the case and move move oh, on as well as as the individuals. So um, uh, again, if there are delays, it, you know, we do our best to, to expedite, we do our best to move forward. Um, sometimes things don't move forward as quickly as you would like because uh, of uh, complications. But, uh, you know, again, we can, we can try to look at individual cases and make sure that things are being done in the best possible way. Uh, but, uh, but we have no interest in delaying. In terms of the check cashing, again, this is not something that is within the, the control of the embassy. Uh, this is a larger issue that, result, that uh, relates to the availability of check cashing facilities in, in Yemen. Uh, we would love to see that resolved. Uh, we would love to see uh, the situation uh, move forward. Uh, but this is not something that, that we in the embassy. Um, but you you are aware of it that there's. Well, large... we're we're aware that that uh, because of of uh, some of the restrictions uh, on the basis of security concerns, mm -hmm. uh, there is uh, not a check cashing facility uh, mm -hmm. in uh, in Yemen. Uh, we would love to see that changed. Uh, we hope that it uh, does get resolved, but it's not something that we can uh, we can change. We just want to be away from the politics yes. a little bit. Yeah. I know. I know. It's uh, before. I think you be an ambassador in Yemen. Uh, that was a uh, Peace Corps there in Yemen. Many years ago. Many years ago. Yes. And as a Yemeni American, we see Peace Corps there was working very well. Mm. Now it stopped. So it yes. stopped. Who's losing it is the Yemeni people. Right. Because of surface education. And right. Do you think that kind of organization going to go back to, to the surface? Or do you recommend a Yemeni American to do the role, to do that step? Because at the end of it, in 10 years, 15 years, because as you know, Yemen, Yemen is getting sexy now. Yeah. So everybody want to go there. <laughs> so do you think, in, <laughs> so I want to make fun a little bit, because I know you have a headache today. <laughs> so do you think uh, a role, and after 20 years, as my son is going to be there, as okay. an American, to oh, take a role. Very good. You know, I'm just, this Excellent. is what I plan to. Yeah, very so good. Do you okay. think in, if we start in kind of, uh, of, 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 uh, of projects, how you recommend it in, in the Yemeni American? Well, I think that's great, and, and uh, certainly one of the one of the things that we talked about both in uh, 2011 mm -hmm. and this time is um, the potential uh, for the Yemeni American community to play a much bigger role in terms of uh, promoting uh, U.S. Yemeni relations as well as, um, as getting involved in uh, some of the development issues that, uh, that are in Yemen. Uh, the, the Yemeni American community has skills, they have uh, the language, they have the interest in uh, being more active. Uh, we would love to see that. I think that that's one of the great things 
uh, about uh, the diversity of the American population is that uh, so many Americans uh, uh, with uh, various ethnic uh, backgrounds, <coughs> national backgrounds, uh, get involved in promoting the relationship between their their old country and their new country. And uh, uh, for Yemeni Americans to, to begin to take on that, uh, that role, it would be a great thing. It would be a huge support uh, to strengthening our bilateral relationship. We'd love to see it. That's great. Well, Your Excellency, thank you for your time. And last question, what, would, what message would you like to send to our viewers, readers, and the uh, Yemeni American community in general? Well, uh, uh, first of all, of course, uh, the message is Eid Mubarak. <laughs> thank you. Uh, and, uh, and secondly, uh, I think, uh, uh, I hope that, uh, that uh, uh, the Yemeni American community is, uh, is optimistic about the future in Yemen. Uh, that, uh, that they see uh, the same opportunities that we see there uh, to really build a, a, a new, strong, prosperous, democratic Yemen, uh, um, that, uh, uh, that all of us uh, can uh, feel good about, and that one that uh, they'll want to be a part of, and that they'll want to, uh, to, uh, to say that, that they played a role in building that new Yemen. So, uh, we look forward to seeing them in uh, Sana'a uh, to come visit us. So let us know when they're when they're coming. We'll be there. And uh, there you go. And uh, and uh, um, you know we uh, we are uh, very positive in our view, and I think that there's a strong commitment on the part of the U.S. government uh, to really uh, continue to support Yemen and uh, to see Yemenis through. Uh, uh, through the, the challenges that are coming forward, uh, that are coming up. Uh, they'll be difficult, they're not insurmountable, and uh, we think that, that at the end of the day we're going to have a great success there. That's good. Well, thank you very much for that. Okay.